Hey guys, Bob here, that Scottish drummer, and I'm excited to share this one with you today because I think I've got an exclusive first on my hands here for YouTube. So I have managed to get my Roland SPDSX working wirelessly with this Yamaha adapter. Now I've seen a few people do this before, mostly with keys and guitar, and I wanted to try this out with the SPD to see if it works, and it does. What I'm using to do this is this little Yamaha adapter. It's the Yamaha BT-01. Bit of a mouthful, but hey. So it just plugs into the MIDI ports on the back of the SPD-SX. It's also powered straight from those MIDI ports, so you don't need any external power. And it transmits wireless MIDI both to and from the SPD. When I first saw this, two use cases jumped to mind. One was using sounds from, say, my iPad or my MacBook and not using the onboard sounds on the SPD. And two, was using the SPD as a wireless MIDI controller for four score, which means I could turn my pages, metronome on and off. I've done a video on this recently, which you can watch up here, but the main difference here is that this is all done wirelessly. So on stage, you could have the Roland set up where you want it, you can have the iPad where you want it, and not have to worry about running a cable. Setup is pretty easy in the iPad, but first you should download the Yamaha MD BT-01 Utility app. Here you can see I had a firmware update, so I did that and I was good to go. Other than that, this app is pretty terrible. You can see it's built for iPhone and just has this really dated, clunky design. So the first thing to be aware of is that you can't connect via the Bluetooth settings menu. The adapter does show up in here once you're connected, but you actually can't connect in here. It's really strange. I don't know why it's this way, but it is. So here's how you connect. Okay, so we're here in GarageBand on the iPad. So what you do is you go up to settings up the top here, advanced, Bluetooth MIDI devices. And once you have the SPD powered on, you can see it right here, MD BT01. So you click and you're connected. I'm gonna swipe over into um, my Bluetooth settings here, which I had open. And you can now see we're connected. It doesn't show up here like going forward. You still have to do this every time, which is pretty annoying, but this is the easiest way I've found to set this up. On the Mac, it's actually not as easy to set up, but here's how you do it. So under your settings, you find the audio MIDI setup, and then we go up to Window, Show MIDI Studio, and then click on the Bluetooth icon to configure the Bluetooth. If you don't see it here, just drag to make your window larger and it should appear. Now you should see the MD BT01. Click connect and you are connected. So I've tested out a couple things on the iPad. Firstly, we'll talk about GarageBand. For me, this is actually the easiest way I've found to connect the Yamaha adapter to the iPad. And it also works perfectly in GarageBand. There is zero latency. Um, it's great for playing the drum kits that are built in in there and I have some VST instruments like uh, Ting. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I was really excited to use this with Fourscore, but I've actually been pretty disappointed with it. I had recently been using my SPD to control Fourscore plugged in via the USB, and it worked flawlessly. But with this, sometimes the MIDI commands aren't read. Like I'll hit the pad and nothing's triggered, or I'll hit it three times and they work, and the fourth time I hit it, it just doesn't trigger. So that's just not reliable. I don't know, I feel like this is something on Fourscore's end, maybe with their Bluetooth MIDI devices. So hopefully that gets an update soon because we got Fourscore 12 coming and um, hopefully that's going to be a nice update and uh, maybe it'll address something like this. If this does get fixed, 
um, and this is a reliable external MIDI pad, then this would be great for the likes of us drummers because you have companies like AirTurn making these external page turners. They have one for drummers, the AirTurn Tap, but that's like 120 pounds here, $150 in the US. So, you know, to buy this adapter, this adapter cost me 31 pounds. So if I can buy that and turn something that I already have and use into an essentially a better air turn tap, then that's great. I haven't tested this out too much with my Mac, but one thing I have tested in is Logic. And again, just like GarageBand, it works flawlessly in Logic. I had my MacBook sitting about four or five meters away from uh, where I had my rolling pad next to me on my drum kit and it worked perfectly. This is gonna be really useful for me because I like to have different work environments. Like if I'm sitting down at a computer, I tend to, I don't know, I'm maybe not thinking as creatively as if I'm behind the drum kit. So if I can have my session open on my computer, quickly connect to the SPD and then jump behind my kit and play the pad, you know, it's just that for me, that's great. So I really like that. All right, so for a kind of conclusion, I wanna look at the benefits and the downfalls of this wireless adapter. Of course, the biggest benefit is that, you know, the SVD is now wireless, which is great. You don't have to worry about running cables and making sure your cables are long enough to set everything up where you want, which can be another problem. This is just for MIDI though, so keep that in mind. You're not sending audio wirelessly, right? The price is also a big benefit here. Like I said, it cost me 31 pounds, whereas page turners alone can cost, you know, 100. So yeah. I think that's a pretty cheap price to add extra functionality to my SPDSX. The downfalls for me, I've seen within Farscore, it's just not working reliably. Like I need that to be solid, you know? The wired connection is great. I don't really understand why the Bluetooth connection isn't. Hopefully that's something that can get fixed soon. And I guess just expanding on that, like the biggest downfall would be the fact that it is wireless because you know, a wired connection is much more secure than a wireless. There's things can go wrong, interference that can drop connection. So um, yeah, it's maybe not as secure, but for things like page turns, you know, if it doesn't turn the page, it's not a big deal. You can just reach out and tap the iPad to turn the page as a backup. Not ideal, but you know, not the end of the world if it doesn't work. So there we go. That's about everything I have to say on this. Overall, I'm enjoying it. It's really cool. Um, it's a lot of fun. You know, I'm into tech stuff. So for me, this was just really cool when I found out about it, I had to grab one. But please let me know down in the comments if you guys are using this, if you're using it on the Roland SPDSX, uh, what else have you got working? What apps are you connecting to on the iPad? What are you using on the Mac? You know, let's get a conversation going and see what people are doing here. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider subscribing. I have a new video come out every Saturday at 12 noon here in the UK. So yeah, with that, stay safe and I'll see you in the next one.